Hello everyone, this is the 2019 LEGO Ninjago Legacy reimagining of the Samurai Neck. It is inspired by the original Samurai Neck set from 2012, which I also reviewed at some point a long time ago. But it's not intended to be just a miniaturization of that. This is a miniaturization of what we saw in the Tales from the Monastery of Spenjitsu little mini-series that Lego put out between seasons 9 and 10. So it's a throwback to the original stuff, but changes things a bit. And here they've offered it in a also smaller set that is thus cheaper. With Lego sets becoming more and more unbearably expensive over time, I'm increasingly a fan of the idea of miniaturization. Just making things that are smaller, but that are still good. That still, you know, do the trick. That still offer you everything that you need from a given item, a given object from a universe, and uh, you know just offer it at a, a lo much lower price. It's much more accessible to more kids. However, it is very easy to mess that up, to get it wrong, and to end up with something that really isn't worthy at all of, of the original design or the concept or you know the general idea for the thing. Let's see about this mech. Articulation is an important thing. Need to be able to move these arms quite a bit. Get some range there. Got these elbows that are kind of pre-bent. Their default angle is 90 degrees, which is not a bad idea. The ball joints appear to be placed in good places. Look at this. I can bring the arm across the body. That's something that often isn't doable. Looks like I'm moving the, the front cage just a little bit in the process, but yeah. That's, that's something that I like to see. That's kind of a, a benchmark that, that says something is done pretty well. But there's more to check out. Let's see. How is this set up? The hands, you know, are really simple. There's just a single clip for that hand there. Would have been nice to see. A little bit better approximation of some fingers there. But at least it is able to hold on to this big sword. That's a good thing. Let's see, I can chop like that. Can I extend this out a little bit more? a little bit more range a little bit more range can I get this one across the body you know you have to you have to work a little bit but not too much those mixel style ball joints are actually arranged pretty well and they have more available these days of the good ones that have more range to them these pauldrons keep moving up and down it really doesn't bother me <laughs> it's, they're actually not needed you don't need to move them like you did on some of the on many of the larger mechs, but uh, yeah, they're, they're just there. Got a couple of stickers on there. So the, the arms are working pretty well. These are stud shooters. You can use them or not. Uh, if you don't use them, just look at them as a little bit of decoration, which I think is fine. Ball joints are used for the legs here as well. Let's see, that moves forward, that moves back. These little flaps are actually useful to give you some more range of motion. Let me see if I can just all right, put this into a pose like this, which is totally not going to work, but let's see if I can make it work by just putting it down on the ground, flattening the, the feet. Yep. I knew it was, I knew it was going to happen because the ball joints are set up in reasonable ways, in good places. This allows me to set this up to make it look like it's in motion. Let's see if I can get this leaping forward, bring the sword arm back. I mean, that's, that's a pretty dynamic looking pose for something that's just stock out of the box. I think that's more than you could do with the original one, honestly. You know, the bigger you get with, with Lego things, the uh, trickier it becomes to do interesting poses just because you're fighting against physics. But I think this is actually pretty, pretty reasonable. I mean, I think anything that I want to do with this, pretty much, I can do. Uh, the only thing that's bugging me about this is that the, the cage keeps moving around a little bit, and it's only attached by a single clip down here. So that may get just a little bit annoying if you're playing with a lot and it, that just keeps flipping forward. At least nothing is popping off, even these little bits here. These are a little bit loose, I guess they could pop out, but you could just leave those out. None of the important stuff is coming out, though. You can actually rotate these flaps a little bit to change their angles to where they where they go back if you want them to 
you know, angle back like that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, just the, the fundamental stuff from what I'm seeing is pretty good here. And of course, these swords are just regular katanas in gold. So, you know, Samurai X herself can use those. She's just attached with, hmm, yeah, that is probably the weakest thing on this entire model. She's just attached with two studs down at the feet. It's so easy to attach and detach. Yeah, I just wish that the, the cage was, was held in a little bit more securely. Otherwise, this is not a failure of a mech. This is actually a pretty good one, especially for its size and being something that's you know, mass-produced and designed to be easy to build just following regular instructions. No super crazy building techniques, no rubber bands, no friction attachments. It's pretty good, and it's legit. It's been a long time since the identity of Samurai X was a question mark. I vaguely, vaguely remember it, but here's the latest version of a throwback Nia with the full armor on and the full helmet with the mouth guard as well, with the little inscribed mouth shape, stylized and all. Let me take some of this stuff off. Uh, the prints are not bad for the torso, especially the upper part. I like the, the, the trim, the gold trim around the top. And there's some depth that's suggested between the, the layers of plates. Let me get the light to angle. There we go, and I can see the, the brightness of the gold. That's, that's pretty cool. I actually really like the print that's on the hip piece for the belt there. It just feels like it's lined up really well and it takes up the space. It's done a little bit better than, I don't know, a lot of the belts tend to be these days. You know, where it's really obvious what, what's been done and it feels a little bit more fake. She's got her alternate face here. That's nice. You know, a, a, a pleasant, happy, satisfied face for when everything is good. More similar printing on the back with a suggestion of uh, depth with the shading there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I don't know if it's my favorite Samurai X to date, but I think it's good for what it is. And then here are the new versions of Cruncha and Knuckle. I'm pretty sure I've seen that uh, in general the nostalgic Ninjago fan community does not like these these new skulking, their, their design overall. But I personally I actually like these better than the originals. They're they're not the originals, you know. They definitely don't look just like what was in the show. But as a reimagining that still tries to, you know, capture their their souls, I think I think they're pretty good. I actually like these heads better. They seem a little bit more serious, a little bit more metal than the originals were. Definitely got a lot more hair with the, the mohawk there. It's nice to get that mohawk in that tan color like that as well. Yeah. Uh, totally personal preference here, but I do like these, and each one has a unique printed torso and unique printed head. And these heads have just a stud on the top. They're compatible with most, well, many uh, <laughs> regular minifig headgear pieces. Not all, but uh, a, a lot of them. The speed build for this set is up on my relatively new build channel. Please check that out if you would like to see me do these builds of sets in a hopefully relaxing looking visual environment and with some relaxing music. Because this is a small set, I did build it in the same video as one other small LEGO Ninjago Legacy set. And I've linked to that video in this video here that you're now watching and also at the end of it and in the pinned comment. These are the parts that are left over. Uh, after building just this set, there's not much to see. I feel like this set is successful overall. Of course it's not going to compare on an ego battle basis against a significantly larger set. If you want something bigger, then this just can't help you. But this is a $15 set. You get a Samurai X mech for $15 with three figures in there. And this thing is very playable, with the exception of just that, that front cockpit holder thing, that little sub-assembly there. This is pretty durable, and it's definitely very, very flexible. More flexible, more poseable, more playable, in my opinion, than most bigger mechs that LEGO has done. And it's easier to get it just into a, a standing pose. You know, 
quickly without finagling it. Just put it on the ground, get the feet flat-ish, and you're good to go. So I, I think it's good for what it is, and I appreciate Lego making things small like this that are still good, but that are easy to get, that are cheap, that are almost in the impulse buy range of, of price. You know, this is, a, this is a price that kids, regular kids, can you know be able to buy with with their own allowance money and stuff without being rich you know yeah i think that's i think that's really important accessibility to good toys good quality toys is important to me and looks like lego agrees and they're they're offering up more and more like that these days hopefully they will continue with that and they won't cheapen out and make too many things that are small and lacking in you know play value and total value thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this hope that you'll check out the build video and build channel and stick around for more of my reviews as well more is on the way talk to you again soon